Hello everybody, my name is Artsify, and today we are looking at a game called Legendary Tales. Now, to begin with, this is an action RPG slash dungeon crawler game. So if this is not your type of game, I would highly recommend looking into it. It is very cool. Uh, as you can see, it's got attributes, it's got a skill tree, uh, new weapons are available. This is still early access, as you can see from the top there. And when we create a new character, you can see... Let me just go back and create a new character. You can see we've got our attribute system here. So we start off with 10 points as per normal. Uh, you can put it into strength, which is used for axes, swords, maces, and shield. shields. Dexterity is for daggers, bows, spears, and bucklers. Your intellect is for magic and wands. And then obviously we got vitality, wisdom, and luck, which we can't do anything with yet. But as soon as you level up, you can start adding uh, points to that. So for this character, we are going to go for a strength build. So we're going to plus five there. And for intellect, we're going to go plus five as well. So we got six in strength, one in dex, six intellect, and the rest we can't do anything with. So you can see that we have our characters there. I've got a level 10, 23 character as well. So this is basically my honest opinion of the game so we're going to start right from fresh uh we're going to start off you can see there is different levels we're on floor one at the moment and we're just going to press start and we're going to go launch right into the game now this game is difficult if you're not used to it it's got a a mix between you can see we've already got our sword you can see you can actually throw your weapon up and down you can actually throw it fairly high as well if you really want to there is if you have done the tutorial you will see that you can actually throw your weapons as well you can see we start off with a shield and a sword a dagger and a wand and also i believe a bow as well if we open our menu uh okay we do not start off with a bow yeah we do actually sorry it is right there. Now, the game mechanics is very similar to that of uh, Blade and Sorcery, as well as the game Hellsplit Arena, in a sense that you fight skeletons and whatnot. We got a weapon and armor smith in this corner over here when we start off. If we head behind this area, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, if they haven't done the exploring in this game yet. But if you have not, you will see that we've got another merchant right here where you can actually buy crystals that contains different items, weapons, and whatnot. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any gold or whatever you want to call it, uh, currency for the game. So there is no point in us even looking at any of that. We are going to go towards our little friend over there. I don't we got 300 gold. Okay, they're just perfect for what we need to do. So now you can see we have our little magic shop where we can buy healing potions and mana potions. But for now, it is not really that necessary. We are going to head straight into the dungeon, which is this way. You can see the whole cathedral-like thing there. We've got a training ground there. And we're just going to enter this. And you can also, you can see, you can adjust uh, the position of where you hold the sword and whatnot, which is pretty damn sick. Now, as far as I know, the dungeons are procedurally generated. It is not set to a specific point. Uh, every time you load in, you're going to find a different dungeon, as far as I am aware and what I've seen. And it is big. The dungeon is absolutely enormous. Now, there's two types of enemies that you can find. There is the goblins. As you can see, these little these little goblins. Now, the combat. Oh, you can see it hit me. And you can also parry them as well if you want to. You've got the shield. Now, you see they've got little health bars. You can, again, you can parry. It just takes some time to get used to it. Now there is a little bit of, oh, and we got our first magic item, you can see we've got a claymore, we can just pick that up, and you can see we've got some gold as well. Now the physics in this game is absolutely phenomenal, like every weapon has got a certain weight to it, which is fantastic, I mean you can't just swing randomly like you can in Blade and Sorcery without any issues, 
uh, and Hellsplit Arena's physics is also pretty good, but I think this game's physics is a lot better. Now you get these little things here, so this one will give us a... will take a little bit of health from us, but it will give us like a little checkpoint to see where we have been and whatnot. We can take that, and it will give us like a little wisp to, to follow, but you'll also find that within the within the tutorial as well. Now there is a skeleton. Now we can kind of bait them in. Now what's good is you can actually you can try and parry them. It's a bit difficult with a Now again, like I said, the physics is absolutely phenomenal. And also the animations is amazing. Every Every attack's got a certain animation to it. Now he just chopped off its arm right there and then. Now to give you guys an example, uh, let's just drop this. Uh, actually, let's take our wand, put that in our inventory. Grab our sword, put that in. And we're actually going to throw this knife. See if we can actually accurately throw it at that little goblin. Nope, that was bad. That was a bad throw, but yeah, you can throw your weapons at them to do damage. Now, uh, for parrying... Uh, and yes, the goblins kind of do that a little bit. See, so he blocked that one pretty decently. The throwing is, you gotta have to get used to, oh, oh, you gotta get used to the throwing though. You see, we threw his arm off right there and then. <laughs> now you also, with the, with the knives, you have to get pretty close to it. And that's more or less what the combat is about. And then they also have chance to drop crystals of different variations. And we got a helmet, which we can just put on. Now, what also makes this game a lot different is we can see our health is not looking that great. If we open our menu, uh, you can see we've also got all these little stats. Uh, we got a little glow over there and we've got a little level up with our dexterity and our strength. We got our inventory, which is right here. You can see that we've got our claymore that we picked up as well as our wand. Uh, this is just our general settings. Uh, it is a uh, four-player co-op, so if you have friends to play this game with, absolutely I would recommend it. And then we've got our magic. Now, magic is amazing. This is where we set our abilities and traits. Uh, for magic, you've got fire, ice, lightning, psychic, and fusion. Now, each level you have to get, you can see we can start off with the basic of uh, requirements of one skill point. And that counts for all the level 1 magics as well. So now, uh, Psychic Shield, we can actually learn that. So we can actually get rid of that. We will equip that into our left hand. So now, when we open our magic bar, equip it. Yeah, let's close that, grab that. You see we have a little shield that we can use along with our sword. Now what's cool about the magic system is when you get to fusion. So for example if we have fire arrow and fireball and intellect level 25 we can create a lava axe to throw at our enemies. The same with lightning if we have lightning arrow and thunder break we can create a plasma coil and also Icicle Launcher, if we have Ice Arrow and Intellect, we can also create that. Uh, then for abilities, you've got your Strength, Dexterity, and Secondary. Uh, for now, we are going to go with our Strength. You can see we have Attack Stance, which is Condition Heavy Attack, which is a passive, which increases our damage by 10%, which we're going to learn. And then obviously, if you have a Dexterity Bolt, you can go for the Dexterity as well. And then secondary skills is basically uh, increases vitality, health recovery, and all that kind of goodies. Now for traits as well, you can see it also 
Hold with Bippin for the first one, which is uh, Gnostafitchen. I believe that is how it's pronounced. Hold weapon with both hands. Enemies have when has been hard parried. It's pretty pretty sick. Uh, then you get your gusty. Hold weapon with both hands again. Uh, it increases whip, uh, weapon damage by twenty percent. Uh, loner as well with daggers and spears. You can just read through all this. This is it's actually pretty good. So you can build your character as you want. So for now, we'll I'll show you how this works with the shield. Our psychic shield, we do use mana for this though, which is a little bit unfortunate. And we've got a little drowsy one there. And good example, we died. Now, what's interesting about this game is the death mechanic. Uh, there's no fall damage yet in the game, which is kind of cool, but also kind of sad because it would make the game a little bit more difficult than it is. But once we head back into our dungeon, we can actually go recover our stuff as well. Now, you do lose everything in your inventory. Uh, except for the weapons that's in your inventory. So we can actually equip that. To make sure that we act. And you can see you can actually, like I said, you can actually do that. Now, two-handed is not my favorite. And you can actually see I can't just swing it with one hand and expect to be effective with it. So now we're just going to go back. You can see that was the way that we went. And we're just going to recover. You can see our inventory that we dropped is right over there. Uh, also, you can break barrels. You can basically break everything in this game for loot. Uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to break the barrels. Uh, what you can also do is you can... Pick them up and you can throw them as well, should you wish to. And also the crystals, you can, if you can accurately slice them, that you can break them as well. Now, this is a hammer. We don't need that. We can just put that in our inventory. And we can actually pick up our shield while we're at it. And we're going to kill these. Whoa. Whoa. That was... That was unexpected, but it's fine. So we can, you can see on our arm, we've got our, our health. And we just chopped off its head right real good. So now, in order to recover your items, you just pull out the sword and Bob's your uncle. And you see there, we did a, a parry to him. And there is another parry and he's dead. Now, also, what's quite cool is the fact that you can actually dual wield certain magic magic spells. So, if we open our inventory again, go to our magic tab, go to our uh, magic tab, we go to our psychic. We can equip it also to our right hand as well. And now, if we equip it, we basically have both at the same time. Now, if you are, if your inventory is full and you want to get out of this, you can technically use the portal spell, which is a bit difficult. I had to figure this out the hard way. Is just open it, wait for it to open up, wait for that, and you just walk straight through in order to open the portal. Now that took me a while to figure out. So wait for it to give that little thing, and you can just walk back through. Now every time you do that, the portal will close behind you. And also, you can dual wield different things. So you can dual wield a dexterity and a strength weapon. Now, this might be a little bit difficult. But overall, this game has phenomenal potential. Again, early access game. The AI sometimes do have a little bit of tracking ish. Oh, that was brilliant. That was... And you see, now we actually leveled up another strength. And there was a hard parry. And sometimes the AI will attack each other, although they don't damage each other, though. Now, again, this is going to take some practice. It's going to take some practice in order to get, get used to the combat within this game, but if you do your practice, 
on the enemies and also you can see it's quite easy to knock them down like that now another thing that's interesting about this game every level that you reach within the cathedral the enemies will get tougher so it is important that you level up so now you see that we've got an additional point there we can either put it into vitality to increase our health our wisdom for our mana or luck which increases our drop rate a little bit but for this we're just gonna go one point of vitality and you see we went from 50 to 55 so this game has got quite a bit of potential and character character progression which is phenomenal now this guy we are again we're gonna see if we can now you can you can parry with any weapon it's a bit difficult sometimes with the shorter weapons And as you can see, it's not always as... Oh, got another one there. And again, the looting in this game is, is pretty cool. You get different different versions of, of everything. So the white is your most common. Blue is magic. Then you get uh, gold, purple, and then I've only once found a red item. And you can see dual wielding is sometimes worth it. Now again, like I said, you can throw weapons, but that's not always the best option. And what's also cool is you can you can use the pommel to actually hit them on the head while bop them. Or you're gonna bop him to death, just like that. And there we got a magic, a magic uh, morning star, I believe. Yeah, magic morning star. You can see it gives us plus two in strength. So weapons do actually add some value for the for the magic and whatnot. So the better weapons you get, the more attributes you get with them. And again, we are looking really low on health, and we don't have any health potions, which is kind of which is kind of bad at this point. But you can again, like I said go back to the to the uh oh, there we go uh you can go back to the town in order to do it now also with the bow you got infinite arrows again a little bit more difficult to aim with the bow as you can see it is a bit more difficult but once you actually get the hang of it they can also block the arrows and the bow is a dexterity weapon so the more dexterity you have and the more skill points you add with dexterity, the harder you're going to hit with it. Now again, not the, not the easiest weapon to use, but still pretty damn good to take out enemies from a range if you can hit them. Now, the enemies generally don't fall off the ledges, which makes it a lot easier for us to take them out. Now, you can kind of rapid fire it, but your accuracy is going to tank a little bit. Come on. And there we go. We actually got another level in dexterity. Now climbing in this game also very very interesting as you can kind of have to do a little workout with that and up we go and you can see we actually got another level up which we're going to put again we can put that into vitality to bring us up to 60 you can see our dexterity level went up to 2 strength to 9 intellect into 6 and also you will see with some of the traits you can see, for example, if we go to a, to our magic ability, in order to get to a certain, like, fireball, for example, we need player level 7, fire arrow level 1, and intellect level 15 in order to actually learn it. Now, again, you can look at the gesture. You can see we charge it and we fire it. Uh, we're just going to... Actually, it's a good, good time to actually show off what the magic actually looks like as well. So we're going to learn fireball. So we have one point. Well, we've got two 
skill points available. So he's going to equip that in both hands. Into left and right. Open our magic wheel. Select that. And now you can see when we get to another enemy, we will blow them to smithereens. smithereens. Again, we can just drop down here without having to worry about full damage. Ah, there we go. There's an enemy. So basically, you charge it up. You will know when it's ready when your fists close. Aiming it, you just have to point your hand towards the enemy and let go. And Bob's your uncle, and they're dead. And again, good idea to always look at your health and your mana. Because if you run out of mana, you can't do magic. And if you run out of health, you die. Now again, you can, like I said, you can pick up pots and everything, and you can break them. You sometimes get some decent loot out of it, for example, gold and health orbs and whatnot, so, which will aid with the battles ahead. But overall, I would give this game a solid 8 out of 10. It is still, again, like I said, early access, so your mileage may vary. And there we go. Both of them dead. And as you can see, our health is pretty low, our mana is pretty low. And also there's mimics in this game as well. Ooh. Don't want to do that. Now, as you can see, we did do a, another level up in select level 7. Now, mimics are a pain to, to identify. The best is when you see a chest, attack it first. And again, like I said, you can pick up barrels and break them. Now this is what we call a mana orb. So look at my mana now. If I pick it up, our mana goes up. Yeah, no health orb, which is a bit of a bit of a problem, but it's fine. And here we here we go. Now in the beginning floor one, it does take two magic hits in order to take down an enemy. But with higher levels, it does get a little bit more, more tricky. We have to be very careful now as to not die. Okay, so that doesn't help. Now, as far as I know, we should be... Okay, so this is another dead end. Which is not not a good sign. But yeah, lo even looking at the reflections and the depth of the game as well, it is phenomenal. They did a fantastic job. Like I said, an 8 out of 10 early access. Would highly recommend putting this game in your library or on your wish list if you have not already. I will link the Steam page in the description. Now again. The dungeon is pretty big. You are going to get lost sometimes. Again, hence why I would recommend using these, but they do take a little bit of health, which we do not have to give at this point in time. Now, there's no wall climbing, which is unfortunate. Because that would be a pretty cool addition to the game. Yeah, there we go. Now, you can see we actually got some more weapons. Uh, this is a health orb, so if we take it, our health will go up a little bit, and our gold will increase once we pick up the gold as well. Now, not to fear as well, what's kind of cool about this game is if you have no inventory space left, and you, like, get your weapons, you do have a stash, which is pretty amazing. Now, again, you can go very... You can go different, different, different angles to this. Oh. Always make sure to go for the head. Okay, that was a bit glitchy. And you see, zero. Always make sure you go for the head. I don't trust enemies. Not getting up. Always be sure to look around you. Because sometimes... 
enemies do stand right against the door, so always be careful about that. And you can see now that gives us luck plus two. We can equip that. And armor does increase your survivability as well by a little bit. Now this is a elite enemy. Very difficult to kill. And they hit hard. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take out the smaller enemy f the smaller enemy out first because if okay, never mind. Now again, it's going to take time to practice the combat. Whoa. Uh, one more hit and we're dead. Yeah, and we're dead. Now that is a problem for us in the long run to recover it because you have to run all the way in order to get it. If you lost your way, sorry for you. Now, you can see we can buy another weapon if we want to. We have 773 gold. If you hover over it, you can see the cost. So that is 189. We just grab it and we have our gold. Now, I don't think... Yeah, we lose everything which is equipped at that point in time. And again, here is our stash. So you can see this is in our inventory currently. So we can also sell that. If we go over to the little forge area, we can select all of it and sell that for 1,145 gold. But overall, fantastic game. I would highly recommend getting it. And I think that would do it for this review of the game. Uh, there is boss areas, which is very difficult to do, especially on your own. You can buy some potions like that. And as you can see, we actually get like a little health potion area there. Again, we got another level, which we can put into vitality. Our strength as well. You can see we also have a secondary skill list. If we go to our skills, not sure if I went over to the secondaries there yet. But you can see you get uh, HP plus 6 per 1 vitality. So if we learn that, you will see our HP go up quite a bit. So... Uh, we actually have that. And you can actually stack them as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. So you can see there, we can effectively parry with our fists. Uh, mana Wellspring, we can recover mana as well, which is fantastic. And again, you can go that, you have little different levels there. So now we actually have some more mana, 1.5 mana per every three seconds. So if you're a mage character, that is something to be important, which is fantastic. Now, the dummies, again, you will learn that in the tutorial. You can see what your damage output is going to be. So this is more of a piercing weapon than a slashing weapon. You can see we do more damage by piercing than slashing. Well, all depends on... And also, you have to time your attacks as well. So it's not just the... You can see if we uh, completely ham, we don't do much damage. But if we time it... Wait a few seconds, stab again, wait a few seconds, and slash, wait a few seconds, and stab. You will see that our damage output is also increased a little bit as well. But I think that will conclude it for this video. I uh, hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative. Now there's different weapons that you can find. And it all depends on your own playstyle of what you want to do. You can deal wield repairs, you can deal wield wands, you can basically deal wield anything. You can go fists. If you really want to, not really worth it though. You're going to die a lot if you do that. But again, this game all depends on your own playstyle. And again, physics are amazing. Like I said, you can throw your weapons and try to catch them as well. You can even... Oh, let me... Let me actually pick that one up now. Oh. Wait, where did that one go now? Oh, it went all the way over there. Okay. And if you really want to, you can even reverse grip it. But any any sort of enthusiast would tell you, reverse grip never works. But for that, bye for now, guys. And if you'd like, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you like this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, 
I would highly appreciate it. But for now, we'll catch you in the next one.